Powered patient lifts allow for the easy transfer, repositioning, and mobility of patients and eliminates risk to the caregiver. There are multiple options available at Trinity Health Livonia, including the Maxi Move and the Sabina Sit to Stand device, but rooms in the south tower of Trinity Livonia are designed with a mounted lift system built into the ceiling. This lift system allows you to use a sling to lift, move, or reposition patients in the room. This video will review the ceiling lift system and demonstrate use of these devices. The lift system is comprised of three components, the track, the lift motor, and the sling. We'll begin by looking at the lift motor. In rooms with a motor installed, you should find it docked to the charger in the back corner of the room near the window. The lift is a VanCare C625. The 625 in the model name refers to the weight limit. This lift can hold up to 625 pounds, and that is the limiting factor because all slings used at Trinity Health Livonia far exceed the 625 pound weight limit. If you look up at the lift, you'll be able to see a few features of this machine. The gray cord on one side of the lift attaches to the control unit. The control unit has buttons to lift and lower the patient. Yep. To use the controls, you have to hold down the button while the lift moves up or down and then release the button when the patient is at the desired height. The unit is pneumatic, not electric, so it is safe to clean thoroughly after use. Next is a small screen. This indicates the battery life. You'll also notice an indicator light on the lift. This works to indicate battery life as well. If the battery is charged and the motor is disconnected from the charging dock, the light should be green and the screen should show a fully or mostly charged battery, but if the battery drops below 25%, the light will turn orange and the screen will show a low bat message and you will hear an intermittent alarm when you raise or lower the lift. If the battery becomes fully depleted, the light will be red and the screen will show up inhibited and you will hear an alarm anytime you try to use the controls. If this ever happens, it will no longer lift up, but you can still mechanically release the patient to safely lower them to another surface. Next to the indicator light is a long red strap. This is the emergency shutoff and release. If the lift stops working while transferring a patient, because maybe the battery died or the control unit got disconnected, you can still safely lower the patient with this emergency cord. If you pull the cord, it will release a small white clip. That disconnects power from the unit. Then, if you continue to pull on the cord, it will slowly lower the patient. You will hear a continuous alarm tone while the patient descends, and it will stop when you let go of the cord. If you've used the emergency release, the lift will no longer function until you push that white tab back into the lift motor. That will re-engage the battery and allow you to charge and use the lift again, as long as the original issue is also resolved. When not in use, the lift should be docked on the charger at all times, so that you never run into the issue of a fully depleted battery. The charger can be found in the back corner of the lift track near the window. To dock the lift, simply pull it back to the corner and it will click into place. When it's properly docked, the indicator light will switch to a light orange. If you look at the charging unit on the wall, when the lift is not docked, that also has a green indicator, and when the lift is docked, it also changes to orange. Always keep the lift docked when not in use. In the center of the lift is a black strap that connects to an H-shaped bracket that will connect to the sling. There are locking hooks on the four corners of the bracket that the sling will attach to. The second part of the lift system is the track. The track is built into the rooms on the south tower, and it's an XY movement system, which means it can move forward and back, and right and left. It allows for full and easy movement anywhere beneath the lift track. And finally, the third piece of this system is the sling. We have two styles of sling available at Trinity Livonia, the seated sling and the supine sling. We'll begin by looking at the seated sling. The seated sling looks like this. The patient will be positioned with their head toward the large portion of the sling. There are four straps attached two on the top near the head, and two on the bottom near the legs. There are color-coded loops in each strap. You'll decide on which colored loop to use when the patient is in the sling, but they are color-coded to make it easier to match the two sides. If you use the green loop on the right side, you must use the equivalent green loop on the opposite side in order to keep the sling balanced. This sling can be applied while the patient is either supine or seated. When the patient is in a supine position, use proper rolling and repositioning technique, which is addressed in a separate video, to get the sling under the patient, similar to how you would change the sheets in an occupied bed. You want the patient's head positioned at the top of the sling, and the patient's legs should be between the legs of the sling. Next, you'll want to tuck the sling's legs under the patient's legs. When you attach the sling to the lift, the sling's legs will crisscross, and the patient will be supported under the thighs, so as you tuck them under the patient, pull them across and drape them over the opposite leg. If the patient is in a seated position, bring the legs of the sling around the patient and tuck them under the patient's thighs. Crisscross them over the patient's legs. With the sling positioned, bring the lift to the patient by pulling it off the charger and swinging it on the track until it's over the patient. 
Pull it by the H bracket and not the control unit. If you pull the control unit too hard, it will probably unplug from the lift and you'll need to climb up to plug it back in before the lift can be used. Lower the bracket until you can easily attach the loops. The leg loops will attach to the two corners in the front and the head loops to the back corners. Ensure that you are matching the loop color for both the legs and for the head, but the color for the legs and the head do not need to be the same. With the sling attached, push the up button and lift the patient until they clear the bed. Then you can freely move the patient anywhere the track covers to move them onto another surface. The seated sling is ideal for transferring to or from the chair or commode. For the supine sling, you will need your patient in a supine position. Using proper rolling and repositioning techniques, get the sling under the patient. The patient should be positioned in the middle of the sling so that both their head and feet are inside the sling. But if the patient is very tall, the feet can extend past the sling, but the head must be inside the perimeter of the sling. This green sling, seen here, is a reusable laundered sling, but there are also disposable products available. The supine sling has a series of eight straps on either side. They are not color-coded like the seated sling, but there are intermittent loops to allow you to adjust the distance from the lift. Again, it is always important that the matching straps on the right and left are on the same loop to properly balance the patient. Bring the lift bracket down over the center of the patient. This sling has eight straps on either side. Four on each side will attach to the top hook and four to the bottom hook. In my practice, I find the sling balances much better from head to foot if the straps for the head are attached from a lower loop, bringing the sling closer to the lift, and the feet from a higher loop, providing more distance from the lift. In this example, we attached all 16 straps at their furthest loop. When we lifted the patient, it had a tendency to lift the legs higher while the head stayed low. And while this worked fine for the purposes of transferring, our patient reported feeling that she was about to tip head first out of the sling. And we'd like this to be a comfortable procedure, so we adjusted the straps, attaching all eight of the head straps to the closest loop and all eight of the foot straps to the furthest loop. When we lifted the patient this time, she was noticeably more balanced and reported that it felt much more comfortable. Once all straps are connected, push up on the controls to lift the patient until you can freely move them along the track. This sling can be used to transfer to a stretcher. You could also fully recline the chair to transfer them to the chair, or you can use it to simply reposition or boost your patient in bed. When the patient is over the desired destination, lower the bracket low enough to allow easy detachment of the loops. As you detach the loops, remember they have a spring-loaded locking mechanism that you'll have to open. After successfully using the lift, it is acceptable to leave the sling in place if you plan on using it again soon. But if that isn't the case, remove the sling and store it for continued use with this patient. The seated slings are disposable and should be thrown away after the patient is discharged or if they are soiled. The green supine slings are to be laundered. Lift the bracket back up to the lift and swing the lift to the corner to dock with the charger. Another important note is that the C625 can lower all the way to the floor, which means if you have a patient that falls, you can use this lift to get them back up into the bed or chair. Either sling can be used, but if you can sit the patient up, applying the seated sling is a relatively quick and easy process. The use of powered lift devices can make transferring, repositioning, and mobilizing patients safe and easy. At Trinity Health Livonia, our goal is to maximize the mobility of all of our patients, but that can't always be done or be done safely with physical techniques. That's why it's so important to know and understand the equipment available to you to help achieve our mobility goals. The use of these powered lift devices like the sit-to-stand, the MaxiMove, and this C625 ceiling lift system are there to help improve patient outcomes and keep you safe in the process.